We're joined by the Housing Minister this morning, Rachel McLean, and a very good morning to you. Um, you'll have heard that clip there from the family. And, of course, in order for the victim in all of this to have a uh, justice served and, indeed, for the officer who's been charged to have a fair trial, it's very important that there is no prejudice in this case. Are you surprised, then, that a former Attorney General, the Home Secretary, Suella Bravman, has intervened? Because, presumably, this outpouring from her in a letter could be used used by the defence. No, I think you need to be really clear here that um, it's very important um, that we support our extremely brave firearms officers. They have to make split-second decisions to keep the public safe, and, and they have our full support in doing that. But it is, of course, also completely right that the Home Secretary continues to look very carefully at the legal framework that governs their operations, as she has always done. It's her job to do that, to make sure that that balance is always right, because we cannot have um, these incredibly uh, skillful professionals who are keeping people safe fearing that they might end up in the dock. And that's why she has announced the review that she has. Uh, and yet we are where we are with uh, hundreds of firearm officers downing weapons and saying that they won't uh, do their jobs effectively because they don't feel safe to do that. Um, are we safe in the capital? What would happen if there was a terror attack, perhaps, like what there has been on, on the bridge behind you? We're told that the SAS and the MOD would step in, but surely they can't respond in the kind of times that we expect from, uh, from our armed forces here in the capital. So public protection is the absolute first priority of this government uh, and that is the Home Secretary's priority as she works through this situation. I think it's really important that your listeners know that that cooperation with the soldiers, with the military of defence is very standard for the government. It's something that I've been involved with previously as a minister in different departments and of course those are professionals, they will work with the Met Police. Um, the soldiers will be working to keep the public safe. They won't have powers of arrest, uh, but ultimately these are operational matters for the police, for the Met Police Commissioner, uh, and keeping the public safe in whatever eventuality will be their first priority. Mm. Uh, what about HS2? Uh, lots of criticism um, of possible plans to scrap that northern leg for, from Birmingham to Manchester, not least uh, from you know, party grandees, George Osborne, Lord Hesseltine writing in the papers this morning, calling it an act of vandalism. Well, look, I'm happy to answer questions on HS2, but before I do, I hope you will allow me to just to plug uh, the brilliant work that's been done by the Community Ownership Fund. We're announcing this morning uh, 45 amazing local community-led projects uh, led by volunteers. Uh, these are really treasured assets at the heart of communities, and that is what our levelling up agenda is all about. On the back of a lot of the investment that's already gone in to level up the country, the four nations of our United Kingdom, one of them is... It's an amazing project, really local to me. It's the Withall Transport Museum. They've got funding to renovate a, a Midland Red bus. Uh, and so, look, this is all part of our levelling up agenda. Um, there's no decisions being made on HS2 yet. Uh, and I think more broadly, you can see this government's commitment to connectivity and transport across the whole country. We've put £33 billion pounds uh, into levelling up the north since this government has been in office. And we will continue to look at these projects that are going to boost that connectivity and economic growth all over the whole of the United Kingdom. Uh, Minister, I think it's very nice all these little cottage projects that you're levelling up with. But 12 million quid you're talking about here, catch yourself on. You must be embarrassed really coming on talking about HS2 possibly being scrapped and you're coming out with 12 million quid which would buy your house in London, basically. I think that's the wrong way of, of looking at it. No, I, I think it's the wrong way of you way. looking at it. I uh, think only people a, like you a... say, we, we, we do levelling up, and then you come out and you say, we've got 12 million quid to restore a little bridge in a museum, all of which is lovely. And if it was my local council doing it, I would think that is absolutely tremendous. But you can't come out and say, this is major government policy, or this in any way reeks of levelling up when you're depriving Manchester, you're depriving Liverpool, you're depriving Leeds of being connected to the capital. If I can just uh, finish and put you this can in context, finish. this is one. Not sure you started. This is but one. This is one. This is one 
This is one project uh, which comes on the back of billions of pounds of funding, levelling up funding, which has gone to the whole of the United Kingdom. Uh, since this government has been in office, we've poured unprecedented amounts of money into local councils, including Manchester, Birmingham, with devolution partnerships, levelling up partnerships, investment zones, free ports, towns fund, and 16.9 million quid just going to my area of Redditch alone. So I strongly refute what you're saying, just because this is a small fund right now. That doesn't mean that that doesn't represent transformational funding for that particular community group. And some of them are absolutely delighted. The Railway Bridge project has said that this has made a massive difference for their community in Keighley. Yeah, yeah. And we mustn't overlook the, that they no, might, they might be small, I do think it's but they a bit are vital to the, They represent a, a lifetime, of, pa they, they represent a a lifetime of passion. As a defence of they scrapping HS2. But listen, not for you and me to be at this. People so, who are watching and listening, I, please, I think can, can they I just, should come in and can tell I be us... Clear? If they so think they're no... being levelled up or not. Um, so you, you say they're being levelled up. So there is, I want to there know is no have... decision to... So can I just be clear? You're talking that there's a decision to scrap H HS2. There is no decision Right. Would you be in favour of that decision? You would obviously expect the Chancellor... You would obviously expect the Chancellor to look very carefully at, at these projects, which do cost billions of pounds. And he said that we do need to look at how the costs have increased over time. Do you think it should be the project was first implemented. So I'm, this, this is not a decision for me. I'm the Housing Minister. Well, um, you this are, is a decision for you know, the, the Transport Secretary and the Chancellor. And, not, uh, and I think you've got to look at our record. In the round, we are investing in transport infrastructure over the whole country. As I've said, since we've been in office, we've invested £33 billion on levelling up transport in the north. That's investment into buses, investment into roads. All of these things are vital elements of the package of levelling up that this government has been responsible for. Um, unprecedented amounts of funding that have gone to councils, not, not only just in the north and the regions, in my area, in Redditch, as I've already said, but also around the whole of the United kingdom and this is having a transformational difference on the ground to people yeah but my question was what do you think i know it's not your responsibility and you may not have ultimate say on whether or not that is but we've heard what lord heseltine thinks we've heard what george osborne thinks they think it's an act of vandalism if they were to scrap this northern leg what is your view was my question well, I think there will always be people who are going to make comments about a project of this scale. Which is your It's view. a significant infrastructure project for the country. Uh, and I would like to see, obviously, what the Chancellor is, is going to do. I mean, it is, it is his responsibility to look at the pressures on the public finances in the round. He has to balance the books. He has to think about the NHS. He has to think about schools and hospitals more broadly. So, you know, I'm sure that he will be coming forward with those decisions soon. And we will wait to see what he decides to do at the next fiscal event. Okay. Rachel McLean.